Hello, uh, Tania Rowland here, and thank you for joining me today and uh, taking the time to listen uh, as part of the series that I'm doing on the rise of the side hustle. Uh, so yesterday I did a Facebook Live where I talked about what a side hustle actually is and why I think you should do one. And today I want to talk about uh, misconceptions I think that people have about side hustles and that are stopping people from getting started. Uh, so first of all, I'm an online entrepreneur and I'm a digital marketing consultant. I've had over 15 uh, plus years working in sales and marketing for multinational companies here in New Zealand and working within the region. Uh, but it was actually um, starting a side hustle that enabled me to leave that full-time job and become independent. And so it's something that's very dear to my heart and something that I'm really keen to help people be able to start, not just start side hustles, but uh, make them profitable and, uh, you know, lead them to uh, what they're ultimately hoping for, which potentially could be uh, independence. So uh, today, uh, like I said, I want to talk about the misconceptions about a side hustle that stop people from starting. And... Uh, You'll notice I'll be looking at my screen because I've got some notes here because I want to make sure that I cover off, uh, you know, all the things that I've got in my head and that I think are important. So before we talk about the misconceptions, I'd like to talk about the, the idea of cognitive bias. And if we look at Wikipedia, uh, it says to us that cognitive bias is a systematic pattern of deviation from norm or rationality and judgment. So what it really is, is that... Uh, we choose to interpret um, what's going on around us uh, based on certain biases. So our brain actually makes mistakes um, and that affects the way we think and therefore the actions that we take. Uh, so the biases can actually lead to us extrapolating information from the wrong sources, uh, seeking to confirm our existing beliefs or failing to remember uh, the actual way things happened around us. So, you know, the brain's a funny thing and, uh, yeah, it, it creates patterns of thought and it wants to anchor to certain uh, bits of information that may not actually be right when we look at the data. So an example with that would actually be that uh, the data tells us right now that the world is the safest it's ever been. But if you ask most people if it is, they're going to tell you it's not a very safe place and the news is going to tell you it's not. But if we look at data going back many years and looking at homicide rates, uh, we're living in a very safe period of time. Uh, so what are some examples of uh, cognitive biases? Uh, so you've got, there's many of them, but just a few. Uh, what we call one is confirmation bias. Um, this is where um, you're looking for information that, that will actually confirm your perception of the world. Uh, then we've got negativity bias. Now, this is an interesting one because, uh, you know, if we look back to our caveman days, inherently the way our brain works, we're always looking to protect ourselves. And so we tend to have a tendency to rely uh, more heavily on uh, negative information than positive. So this is one that uh, is probably quite common for most of us to experience. Familiar familiarity bias a good example around this is if we look at people who do investing, say property investing, they'll feel more comfortable investing in a, a house in their local area because they're more familiar. Uh, that is not to say that investing outside your area uh, is any better or worse, but we tend to stay uh, in our safe zone. Uh, another bias is an anchoring bias. A good example here is that uh, during salary negotiations, whoever puts the first number on the table tends to create the anchor of where we focus and therefore we don't tend to challenge that number once someone's put it on the table and another one is the bandwagon bias where those around us the common thinking we follow along with everybody and so you know we, there's a saying that we are um, the sum of our of our five closest associates or friends so we need to be really careful when we're considering something new like a side hustle where are we getting our sources from of validation? Are we looking for people to validate us in the negative way? Uh, are people around us have had bad experiences and therefore we anchor to that and uh, choose to not uh, go ahead, but the data that we're getting is wrong? 
So let's just um, let me just clean up my screen here a little bit and get to my notes a little bit better. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, now I am new to Facebook Live and I am uh, figuring out uh, the screen that I'm using. So I think someone's watching, but I can't see comments. So uh, thank you, whoever you are, for listening live. And uh, uh, if you do make any comments, I'm not likely to see them, but I might see them later. Uh, and I appreciate, you know, if you have got any uh, thoughts or questions, jump in. All right, so today we're talking about misconceptions uh, that stop people starting their side hustle. And I've just talked about different cognitive biases. And, you know, I wanted to start with that because uh, I'm going to talk about some misconceptions and things that you might have believed that are wrong and the data tells us ain't different. So one for me was um, the word entrepreneur. When we start a side hustle or when someone starts their own business, there's this phrase that we are an entrepreneur potentially. And I know for me, I never gravitated to that word. I didn't see myself the way that I believed an entrepreneur was. Uh, my belief, hey Fiona, how are you? I can see comments. Thanks for jumping on. Hope you're doing well today. Um, so talking about the word entrepreneur, my belief was that an entrepreneur was someone who's very bold very brave and um, a risk taker and someone who's very action orientated. And even though I'm action orientated, I am not a risk taker. Um, I'm anything but. But when we look at the data, there's a lot of articles that look at the behavior patterns of entrepreneurs, successful people as, as entrepreneurs. And actually, they're not risk takers. They're risk mitigators. Um, and when I started to look at that data, that gave me some real reassurance that actually maybe the way I wanted to go about things uh, was the right thing to do and I needed to do it quicker. So what entrepreneurs are really known for is uh, reducing their risk. So what we see is they don't hold back from learning and taking action, but they mitigate risk. So some examples would be Richard Branson. He's a really uh, well-known entrepreneur. But when he started Virgin Airlines, he had an arrangement with Boeing that if things didn't work out, he could return the planes. So pretty bold to actually even negotiate that. Um, uh, so, you know, there, there are a number of examples um, and documents that tell us that uh, entrepreneurs are very good at mitigating risk. And yesterday I talked about the side hustle being something where um, – you do alongside your job. And this is why, you know, I'd really advocate that you don't have the goal to leave your job immediately. Your goal is to, if, if it's about income and independence, is to build a side hustle that develops an income. That's the goal, a regular steady income that then gives you choices. Because um, once you have choices, then you might make different decisions rather than just, oh, I want to leave my job. Um, Age, this is a one that I think, um, you know, we have assumptions that a side hustle, uh, maybe because we can really leverage technology is for younger people. Um, and, you know, we sometimes we may, if we have that confirmation bias, gravitate to seeing uh, younger people uh, doing a side hustle. But age is irrelevant. When we really look across, you know, in the environment that I hang out in, looking at online entrepreneurs, I see a real variety of ages. And age um, is irrelevant in the sense that you're going to attract people to you that see something in you that's familiar. So if you're starting a business and you're targeting people that are not younger, then th and you're not younger, they're going to relate to you a lot better. So don't let age be the factor that stops you starting. Um, so sometimes we think, a side hustle or starting a business is only for some people. Um, absolutely not again. I can see introverts, extroverts, people with lots of experience, people with no experience, building very uh, good side hustles. The only thing that I see that separates them from other people is their mindset and their belief or their desire and drive to create something. Um, the time required to build a side hustle. Yeah, it takes time, but that really is an excuse if you want something. Again, um, we all have the same amount of hours in our day and we need to make choices. Uh, I would see this a lot when I would coach people in the corporate environment 
that has a very busy mindset. And I would, when I would be coaching people around maximizing their output and their effectiveness, we'd talk about their calendar and how they would manage their tasks and their email. And I would say to people often, turn off your email when you're doing tasks, when you're doing a project. Clear the things around you, take away the noise and focus. And so often people's natural reaction was, I can't do that. What if someone emails me? And again, that is a belief. It's a cognitive bias about what we can and can't do and what works for us. And when people finally embraced that mindset, they got more done. So time required is, um, uh, you know, something that don't let that hold you back. You need to focus on your why and uh, why doing a side hustle is important to you. If it's not that important that you're prepared to make changes in your environment, then that's fine. Don't do it. Um, I have, you know, if I look at myself, I've uh, worked a full-time corporate role, uh, being a single mother and build a side hustle on the side. And I'm not saying I did it perfectly, but if I can find the time, then, then you can. Um, so the other thing that I think stops people from starting a side hustle is um, the concern that what they might do is going to conflict with their job or conflict with what they're known to be doing. Um, and I, again, yes, I know when I started my side hustle, I was very mindful about the conflict in my day job and I started with something that I felt didn't have a conflict. Interestingly, though, I see um, clinicians, for example, who work as a medical professional and then do speaking uh, on the side. Uh, I see people in very senior corporate roles doing speaking as well. And they've managed to allow that side hustle to complement what they do and also to build their brand. So, again, I think that's about seeing things in a different way and thinking through why you want to do this side hustle, where's the value that you can bring to the table and what it will do for you, and potentially can it add value to your workplace and to your brand, or sometimes selfishly, will it build your brand for your career overall? It's becoming really quite normal now that we see people doing more than one thing and that those things complement each other. So I suppose, you know, when we've talked about cognitive bias, I'd really encourage you that if you have certain uh, roadblocks uh, that are holding you back from starting your side hustle, beliefs like I did, I believe that an entrepreneur was a risk taker when they're not, go out and find examples that counter your belief structure. Find data that tells you something different so that uh, you can challenge yourself. So today, um, you know, I want to thank, I see a few people have jumped on and jumped off. Uh, and thank you for that, because I know that, uh, you know, we're all busy and I appreciate uh, people taking the time to listen to what I'm sharing as part of this series on uh, the rise of the side hustle. So uh, if, you know, I've sparked some thinking for you today and there are definitely, um, uh, you know, beliefs you've got that uh, are potentially holding you back, I encourage you to identify those stories you're telling yourself. And then go out and find data to dispro disprove the thinking you have. And I'd love it if you would share in the comments um, if I've sparked some thinking and maybe help dispel some beliefs you've got. Or if there's a certain, uh, you know, uh, element that I touched on that is one of those things that's holding you back. Uh, so thank you. Uh, tomorrow, um, I'm going to talk about how do you identify where to start, which side hustle to pick, because often we have more than one and we're not sure what we should do and how uh, we are you know which one we should pick to start so um thank you really appreciate those that are jumping in to listen and uh, i'll jump on facebook live again tomorrow